Hey everyone, Tom here, and I'm here to bring you another tutorial about converting from a PBR texture or material to an MPR material. And PBR stands for Physically Based Render, and we're going to MPR, which means Non-Photorealistic Render. In this specific case, we're going to a Tune Shader. First thing we're going to do is just uh, launch Octane right here and get the uh, preview window open. And now we're just spinning around the model. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to eliminate the uh, background because we don't want that being a distraction. And uh, we don't really need global illumination. This is tune shading, uh, so it doesn't really need that. The next step is that uh, I'm going to start removing um, texture we don't need because it comes with metalness and roughness. And of course, that's for physically based material and we're doing tune shading. So I got rid of all the roughness and met uh, metallic, but I'm keeping the albedo and the normals. And you'll see why in a few minutes. And uh, I went through the process of like, uh, just basically taking the universal material and just uh, converting it or changing it to a two material here. And now I'm spinning it around. So we have the outline all set up and I'm just going through right now and uh, just kind of evaluating the model and how thick the lines are right now and taking a look at see how that's all coming into play. Uh, the next thing I want to do is also set up the lights. Um, you know, being a two material, you need to have a specific lighting setup uh, for Octane. And uh, Octane, if you don't have lights, then, you know, nothing shows up in the render. So setting up proper lighting, and this time we're using tune lighting. I'm using two tune directional lights. And that's going to help us uh, get this set up to see how the highlight falls on the model and just basically how we're going to shade it. And right now, I'm, uh, at this point right now, I am playing around with the line thickness and see what I like. And I went with 0.2 for the line thickness. And now I'm just going to go over and just apply it to the rest of the material for the other parts of the body. So right here, I am right now trying to figure out what I want to do with the eyes because uh, in the PBR setup, I have an emission light. So I'm going to try to see what I can do with it. So I covered it over to Tune and um, well, it didn't look like it was working too well since um, nothing was glowing. So I guess we have to see if that's something that I want in there. and. Um, Eventually, I went back to the mission lights because I just like it better. Did a bunch of undo steps here uh, to get back to the emission lights. Now, playing around with the setup and trying to find what works is very important in CG. That's pretty much the bulk of your time is just experimenting with looks and to see what works and what doesn't work. And of course, it's a subjective, so keep that in mind. What works for you might not work for your supervisor or your art director, so just be flexible. Right now, I'm setting up the, uh, the basically the albedo texture, and I'm plugging it in. Now, the, without the roughness and metallic texture, it kind of comes out flat, and that's what we want you know, because it's tune shading. Everything's kind of flat looking. And now, I kept the normal, because uh, there's been some, um, I find that it adds a lot of nice detail, but uh, I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. Right now I'm setting up the uh, a tune ramp and the tune ramp kind of controls the fall off. Right now we have a sharp fall off and if we change it to linear, 
or even to cubic, the fall off becomes softer. And normally we don't want that because uh, most cell shading has like a hard line for the shadow. So if you want the tune or the cell shaded look, you would have to uh, go with a harder line. So something to keep in mind is that if you want your viewport to update correctly uh, as you're making changes, you should go to the Octane properties and make sure that the model you selected are considered proxy objects. And the reason why you want to do that is that it actually tells Octane to check to see if there was any changes uh, being made. And once uh, it recognized that, then it'll update the viewport. Now, sometimes it doesn't work. You have to um, manually click the update button, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. So right here, I'm creating two levels of shadows. One is the bright part and one is the dark uh, black part. And then I have a medium gray and I broke, I broke that up into three sections. That's something you can do in Octane. You can break it up into even more sections, but uh, I believe three section was good enough for me. And right now I'm playing with the lights. I am tinting it a little bit bluish for the key light. And right now I am duplicating the light and creating a rim light. And I'm just kind of playing around with the settings again, trying to get a uh, good setup here. Now the rim light I made red to contrast the slight tinted blue. Of course, uh, the model itself is green, so that's something to keep in mind. Now right here, I'm playing around with the fall off and trying to get something that uh, works nicely. Right now the light is uh, set up a little bit high, I believe. Yeah, I'm kind of fighting the viewport a little bit. Normally I work with uh, two monitors instead of one. So I don't have to slide the windows around all the time like I'm doing right now in this video because I'm trying to contain everything onto one monitor. And that's something that's really important with 3ds Max. You need at least two monitors to work with. Uh, if you don't, you're gonna be sliding windows back and forth all day, and that's not fun. Um, my current setup, actually, I have three monitors, and the three monitors actually helps me out quite a bit because on the third monitor, I use as a reference monitor, and, you know, the occasional web browsing and emails and music. Right now, I am trying to control the um, the specularity of the tune shader. So you see those round balls; those are supposed to be like highlights, right, from the coming from the light source. And uh, with this tune ramp that I'm plugging in, I can also control various levels of how that fall off works. And right now, I'm using um, linear, but then I switch over to constant, and constant gives us like hard circular lines or multiple hard circular lines, depending on how you want to set it up. And uh, I go through and um, just play around with different settings here. And the roughness controls how large that circle is and the specular controls how bright it is. And of course, with the tune ramp, you can also modulate it too. Um, and also give it a little bit more control. So I'm playing around with the settings and I'm not getting the desired look that I want. And then I realized that I have to refresh the viewport. 
And after I refresh the viewport, then you can see the fall off is soft when it's set to cubic or linear. And that's the way it's supposed to behave. So when you get strange events happening, just keep in mind that you should refresh the viewport to make sure that uh, it's not you. Um, but you know, it's uh, the program is still a work in progress and there's uh, still bugs that needs to be ironed out. So just keep that in mind. There's always bugs in software, so it's expected or you should expect at least um, some bugs in it. So this robot has five different materials set up, one for each arm, one for the body, one for the head and chest, and, one for, and um, two for the legs. In order to make it easier for myself, I connected a, um, basically a float texture, which is just basically a floating num uh, number value, and I just plugged it into each one of these slots. That way I can control the settings from one node instead of going to each one. Of course, later on, I'll go and rename it to make it a little bit clearer and uh, make it a little bit easier for me to just go back and uh, make settings if I, in case, you know, I forget what I was doing. Making sure that you rename things properly is always important. So right here, I'm dialing in the size and uh, right now I'm playing around with uh, setting up the uh, circular, specular spots. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, the lights are not physically based. So depending on your intensity, the light and the shadows actually uh, falls across your model differently. So you might wanna pick something um, not too extreme. So I went from one to around the value of 10 for the lights. And then um, I kind of kept it there and then just kind of adjust everything else. In a sense, it's kind of nice because uh, it gives you a lot of artistic control. You don't have to worry about like, setting things properly. You just want to make sure that things look right. So something to keep in mind is that um, when you increase the intensity of the light, there's actually a cap value so it doesn't get brighter than a certain amount and for you to make it even brighter or more intense uh, what i end up doing was just duplicating the light and having it double up and that actually makes the model bright brighter uh, or more intense the light the lighting on the model actually becomes more intense and that's probably a better way to do it than to just try to increase the actual value up as high as possible because what ends up happening is when you do that is that uh, the light shifts a little bit on, on the model and the light doesn't get that bright, as I was saying before. So to make it work better is uh, sometimes it's better to just duplicate the lights. Once you change the lights, you're going to have to go back and tweak the fall off and the shadows and the, um, the highlights a little bit just to make sure that everything works out.
and I went and changed the background to a little bit darker. And what I'm going for is this uh, RGB color, primary color scheme here. So you have the red rim lights, the key light, which is tinted slightly blue, but because the model is green, it has like a greenish uh, look to it. And then of course the background is bluish. Now I'm trying to mess around with the texture a little bit with the gamma to see how I want to set that up. And I ended up just going back to default. And I'm right now connecting the normal maps uh, to the tune shader. And you can see that it kind of breaks up that line a little bit, adding a lot more detail to it. And you can see the, um, the tune shader, the way it looks with the normal map on it. And you can see it's, there's a lot more detail. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, I think I like it, so I kept it. And I went and applied the same thing to the other parts of the body. And I'm going in right now trying to connect the, um, the settings for the power uh, or the intensity of the normal map. And uh, once I set that up, I don't have to go in and do it five times every time I want to make an adjustment. It just makes it easier. Right now I'm renaming everything to make it clear what these uh, these values or these uh, what this nodes controls. And I'm just kind of dialing the, uh, the normal settings to see if I'm liking the 0.2 value that I entered before. To finalize the look, I went into the Octane Render Setup panel. And what I want to do right now is add a vignette, or there should be a slight vignette already applied, but I'm going to make it a little bit stronger. And I'm also going to control the glare that's coming from the eyes and see if I want to boost it or reduce it to see um, what will work best for this image. And I settle with a little bit more glow. And as I said before, it's really up to you. We're doing a NPR render and we don't have to strictly follow the rules of uh, cell shading, I guess, as we uh, normally follow. Of course, this is CG doing cell shading, so that's something that um, uh, we'll have a little bit more liberty in doing. And that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks.